Hello and welcome students to my YouTube channel. In the last video lecture, we had completed first chapter of statistics that is collection of data. Uh, now in this chapter, second chapter, we are going to start today that is uh, you can see presentation of data. It means after collecting the data, how that data is to be, is to be represented. Uh, for that, it can be in the form of tab tabular form, uh, that is in table form, or it can be in diagrammatical representation of whatever the data that we have collected. So, first of all, uh, before moving on to the tabular form of uh, representation of data, uh, we'll understand the basic uh, concept of this chapter. In the last chapter, you had studied the two terminologies that is what is quantitative data and what is qualitative data. Now in case of quantitative variable, there are uh, two terminologies that is discrete and continuous variable. Again repeating, uh, in case of quantitative variable, there are two terminologies that is discrete and continuous variable. Now what is discrete variable and what is continuous variable, we will understand that topic. Discrete variable. If we have to count for obtaining the value of a variable, then it is discrete variable. It means if we have to count the number, right? If we have to count for obtaining the value of particular variable. Uh, suppose here examples are given to that is number of children per family. It means in one family, suppose there are two children, one children, three children. Then accordingly, uh, we have to count that number uh, in order to get the value of that particular variable. Then it is called discrete variable. Okay. Another example is given to you number of accident on a road. It means in one day how many accidents are happening to count that value of particular variable that is number of accidents uh, that is called discrete variable. Okay. Now the next topic that is continuous variable. Continuous means no any gap is there. It means it is continuous. If the value of variable is expressed along with measuring unit, over here also the value of any variable is expressed, is being shown. But how it is shown? With the help of the measuring unit. Suppose in centimeter, inches, liter, meter, uh, feet, whatever may be the measuring unit. Right? Uh, with measuring unit, it is continuous variable. Suppose height of person, height of person may be in centimeter, in, uh, suppose we are telling 5.2, then it will be measured in inches, in feet, in centimeter uh, or temperature in Celsius. We are saying 100 degrees Celsius, we are telling 58 degrees Celsius. So temperature we are measuring in Celsius degree, right? So always uh, in this type of variable, the measurement or the value of any variable is being shown with the help of the measuring unit. So over here in discrete and continuous, both the value of any variable is obtained, but the main difference is over here that it is shown with the help of the measuring unit. Okay. Now, well, the main topic of our chapter that is presentation of data. Now to present the data, we have to classify the data. We have to distinguish it into different characteristics or different categories. Okay. So a process of arranging ungrouped data into proper form is called classification of data. It means whatever the data that we have collected, we have understood in the last chapter that we are collecting from various sources of uh, sources that is primary data from secondary data from by method of questioner that all topics we had studied what are the sources of collecting the data now after collecting that data that data is in raw form it is ungrouped uh, from that we cannot conclude or make the analysis so to come to conclusion to interpret from that data we have to classify it into different categories or characteristics okay so that classification of ungrouped or raw data is called classification of data okay next one now why the need arised to classify the data so here you can see the reasons to classify data what is the requirement human being doesn't do anything without any selfish reason behind it right so over here also we are having the reasons to classify the data first one to represent large data into simple short and attractive <coughs> manner 
Now, whatever the data that you have collected, that is in large quantity, huge quantity. Now, that data, if it is classified, if it is properly uh, framed in an attractive manner or in a tabular form, then any of the unknown person also can get or interpret the result by looking at that data. So, from that classification of data. So, it would be easy to analyze the large and uh, large data in a more attractive and simple way. Okay. So, to represent large data into simple, short and attractive manner. Because of that, classification of data is necessary. Next point is for easy comparison between various characteristics of data. If you are comparing the two characteristics of any particular uh, variable, then easily we can uh, do the comparison of that two characteristics of any particular variable through the classification of data. Next comes third point that is to save time, money and labor. But natural if the raw data from the raw data on group data we are doing the analysis or interpretation of results then it is more time consuming and laborsome work. Instead if it is classified into different categories or characteristics then from that easily the analysis or interpretations can be available with less time, money and labor. Okay. Now the last and the uh, last reason for uh, classification of data that is to obtain information easily. Uh, by tabular uh, form of the data, classification of data or by diagrammatical representation of data, easily even the illiterate person also can get the idea through the graph that what is the interpretation or what is the result of that particular analysis, right? So, it easily the information can be available by classification of data. So, these are the four reasons because of which classification of data is to be done. It is must, okay? Now, uh, moving on to the main topic after understanding what is discrete variable and continuous variable now let us understand discrete frequency distribution in 10th standard also you have understood frequency distribution again revising the topic a uh, numeric value showing the repetition of value of an observation is called frequency of that observation it means a numeric value showing the repetition. It means for how many times that same value is being repeated. That is called the frequency of that particular observation. Now we have understood what is the meaning of frequency distribution. But over here the word is added that is discrete frequency distribution. Okay. So first of all uh, understanding for that we have to understand one basic formula for it that is range. Now what is range? Range means the uh, from which area from the which higher part to the lower part. What is the range? Right. So over here you can see the formula to find a range is maximum value minus minimum value. Maximum value means the highest value. We can call the highest value. Suppose there are data given to you of number of accidents on road that are data given to you of 50 days right of or of 30 days of a particular month then that value out of that whichever is maximum value suppose on a particular day uh, there are 10 accidents that are happening in a day and so that is the highest value and the lowest value that is minimum value that comes to 1 right so mix maximum value minus minimum value that would come the range so 10 minus 1 is equal to 9 so 9 would be your range okay now after understanding uh, discrete frequency distribution, uh, discrete frequency distribution will always be applied when the data is comparatively of the small range, right? Uh, and continuous frequency distribution will be applied when the data is of large range. So we can distinguish which formula or which frequency distribution is to be applied on the basis of the value of range, okay? Now, let us understand continuous frequency distribution. When the variable of raw data is continuous or range of data is large, right? What I said that in case of discrete frequency distribution, when the range of data is small, right? Then 
uh, discrete frequency distribution we have to utilize and when the range of data is large then we have to utilize continuous frequency distribution and when the variable of raw data is continuous it means whatever the data that are in continuous series one after the other and when the range of data is large at that time we have to apply the continuous frequency distribution okay now over here you can see one formula I have written that is C is equal to R upon K. Now what is C, what is R and what is K? Now a R you are very much familiar already you have understood that is range. Capital R that means range. Okay. So C means class length. Over here you can see I have written where C is equal to class length. Okay. And K means number of classes. Class length means suppose it is given to you uh, 10 to 20. Then what would be the class length? That is 10. Right? So 10 to 20, 20 to 30 such classes are given to you. Then class length that would be 10. So C is representing class length. And K means number of classes. Suppose the entire data in the question is given to you of 8 classes. Suppose 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40. So on there are 8 classes. So K represents number of classes. Okay. So K is equal to 8. If 8 classes are given to you. Okay. So uh, C is class length and K means number of classes. Now what is the formula to find class length? Okay, so C is equal to range upon number of classes. By this formula, you can find the class length. Once you get the class length of any of the class, you can easily uh, get the class length of other classes also. Suppose by this formula, you get the answer class length that is 10. So easily you can understand that the first class length is 10. So same class length you have to maintain in all the subsequent classes also. Okay, so C is equal to range upon number of classes. Now we can uh, do like this way also. C into K that is cross multiplication we can do. C into K is always greater than or equal to R. Okay, now if you want to find, suppose in the question class length is given to you, number of classes is given to you and you have to find the range. Okay, it may happen that class length is given. Number of classes is given, but range is not given to you. So to find the range, we have to multiply class length, multiply by number of classes. So C into K, whenever you will be doing C into K, always the value should be greater than or equal to capital R. It means the value should not be less than R. Range should always be greater than or equal to multiplication of class length and number of classes. So this notation you should remember that a C multiplied by K is always greater than or equal to R. Okay. Now exclusive and inclusive. These are the two terminologies that we have to understand in case of continuous frequency distribution. Okay. Now what is exclusive frequency distribution and what is inclusive frequency distribution? Okay. If the upper limit of any class and lower limit of its succeeding class are same. Now what is upper limit and what is lower limit? Here one example you can see I have written that is 25 to 30. One class and I have written 30 to 35 and 35 to 40 and so on. So three classes that I have written over here that is 25 to 30, 30 to 35 and 35 to 40. If the upper limit of any class, suppose I am taking the second class that is 30 to 35. What is the upper limit that is 35? If the upper limit of any class and lower limit of its succeeding class. What is the lower limit of its succeeding? Succeeding means the next class after that, right? So, succeeding, uh, uh, sorry, lower limit of the succeeding class are same. It means whenever the upper limit of any class and the lower limit of its succeeding class are same. Over here you can see the upper limit of this class and the lower limit of the succeeding class both are same. If they are same then it is called exclusive frequency distribution. Over here one more example see. Uh, the upper limit of any class suppose of this class the upper limit is 30 and the lower limit of its succeeding class is also 30. When both the values are same then it is called exclusive frequency distribution. And opposite of it, that is inclusive frequency distribution. Now, if the upper limit of any class and lower limit of its succeeding class are not same, especially I have underlined, 
not same. Over here they are same. And over here they are not same. Over here you can see one example that I have given 10 to 19, 20 to 29, 30 to 39. It means the upper limit of any class. Suppose 10 to 19 class I am taking. The upper limit, what is upper limit in this class? That is 19. And the lower limit of its succeeding class. What is the lower limit of its succeeding class? That is 20. So are they equal? No. They are not the same value. Then that type of distribution is called inclusive frequency distribution. When the upper limit of any class and the lower limit of its succeeding class are not same, then it is called inclusive frequency distribution. Now we understood exclusive and inclusive frequency distribution. Now before starting with the new topic formula, we will understand two of the illustrations. One illustration that will take explaining to you the discrete frequency distribution and the another that will be explaining you the continuous frequency distribution. I am not showing the calculation because already that has been given in your textbook. So while referring this video lecture, do open your textbook and refer the concerned illustration with me. Okay. So the first illustration that you can see that is on page number 17 of your textbook. I am reading the question. In a television manufacturing company, 500 television sets are produced during a week. During a week, how many sets are produced? That is 500 TV sets are produced. A sample of 50 television sets is drawn and each television set is examined. 50 out of that 500, a sample of 50 television sets has been observed. The number of defects per set is given below. Number of defects per set out of that in every TV set, what are the number of defects? that has been examined. Prepare an appropriate frequency distribution. Now over here you can see 50 observation or uh, defects of 50 television sets have been given to you. The value of the uh, uh, defects or the highest value is 5 and the lowest value that is the 0. Right? So the data, the range that would be coming 5 minus 0, so it would come to 5. First step that we have to always find that is the range. That for finding the range from the given data, we have to find which is the maximum value and which is the minimum value. Over here, from the 50 data, you can see the highest value or the maximum value that is 5 and the lowest value that is minimum value that is 0. So 5 minus 0, so range that would come to 5. Now, after finding the range, uh, in 10th standard also we have understood or we have studied, even in primary section also we have studied the how to do the tally marks, right? We were doing like this way, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5th one we were doing the cross, uh, right? we were doing the vertical line over it, right? So, see if that same method we have to uh, follow in order to classify the data. Over here you can see the number of defects per television set. Next page, that is page number 18, the a discrete frequency distribution table has been represented for the solution. That is uh, 0 to 5. What is the lowest value? That is minimum value starting that is 0. And the highest value, maximum value that is 5. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now the second one that is tally marks. Tally marks means you have to count from each and every data. Suppose the first value that is 0. Then you are in front of 0, you have to put 1 dash. Right? Vertical line. A vertical line. Then afterwards, if the next value that is 2, then you have to put again the second mark in front of 2. Like that way, you have to do the tally marks. I am not uh, doing the calculation because already this tally marks, you are knowing it very well. Now, after doing the tally marks, we have to count it. Suppose in uh, textbook, you can see in case of 0, total 1, 2, 3. And so, which is 5, 3 is a 15. 15 plus 3, it means 18, right? So, total number of uh, defects uh, per television set, that is in case of 0 then the frequency that is 18 okay then afterwards for one television set then the number of television sets that is uh, 15 uh, sorry 5 plus 5 10 10 plus 2 12 so number of television sets having one defect that are 12 television sets and two defects having that are 5 plus 4 it means 9 uh, three defects having number of television sets that are 6 uh, then three television sets are having four defects and uh, two television sets are having five defects. So in this way we can classify the whatever the large data that has been given to you in tabular form. So from this classification easily anybody can analyze uh, the data or can interpret the results from it. 
So total should come always with the total amount of data that has been given to me in the question. So you can see last the total has been written that is 50. So easily you can understand that our answer is correct. Okay. So this tally marks that was quite easy. So practically I have not shown it to you on the board. Next in continuous frequency distribution for that you have to refer illustration number 2. That is given to you on page number 20 of your textbook. So let us read for the question first of all. Figures regarding the sales in 1000 rupees of different items in a super mall during 4 weeks are as follows. Uh, selling uh, of the super mall has been given to you of last 4 weeks. Data has been given to you. You can see the data are comparatively large. Right? Uh, we have already discussed when the data are comparatively large and they are in continuous series. At that time, it is preferable to utilize the continuous frequency distribution. Okay. So, continuous frequency distribution by classifying these data into 8 classes. Now, over here, the question, in the question itself, it is given to you that you have to classify the data as per continuous frequency distribution. How many classes? Number of classes has already been given that is 8 classes. Okay. So, first step always I told that you have to find out the range. Range is equal to maximum value minus minimum value. Now after looking at the data you can get the idea that the maximum value that is coming to 265 and the lowest or minimum value that is 80. So, so 265 minus 80 that would come to 185. So a range that is coming to 185. Now the next step that we have to find in this type of sum that is the basic formula that I have already taught. That is class length is equal to range upon number of classes. Number of classes already that is given in the question that is 8 and range that we have found out that is 185. So we can easily find the class length. Okay, so you can see your calculation in the textbook that is class length is equal to range that is 185 and upon number of classes that is 8. So 185 divided by 8 that would come to point answer decimal it would come that is 23.125. For the convenience, class length should be taken as 25. Generally, we are taking in multiples of 5. So, for easy, uh, easily understanding or uh, putting it into various classes. That's why nearby value to 23, we are taking the class length that is 25. So, we are representing with the uh, first class where the minimum value should be coming. Now, the first class that I have taken that is 75 to 100. Now, how this 75 that we have decided, what is the lowest value that is given minimum value that is 80. We have to class start our class with value of with multiples of 5. So, if we are starting class length is 25. So, naturally we have to start with a value where 80 is already included in that particular first class. So, we have to start with 75 to 100 in which the minimum value that is 80 is coming. So, you can see in the textbook by taking the lower limit of the first class as 75 and the upper limit as 100. But natural gap we have to give class length that is 25. So, the first class that would come to 75 to 100 right in this the minimum value that is 80 would be coming so we have to start with such class where the minimum value should be included okay so 75 to 100 then afterwards 100 to 125 and so on till the last value now what is the maximum value that we had already discussed that is 265 so what should be our last class that is 275 you can see in the question and total number of classes that should be 8 you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 so total 8 classes and the last class should be including the maximum value and the first class should be including the minimum value. Okay, that way we have to arrange the classes. Then afterwards the tally marks that is the same one you have to count and do the tally marks and count the frequency and the total of the frequency that should be coming equal to the total number of data that has been given to you in the question. So total 28 data has been given to you that is coming the answer of the frequency. Okay. So this was the new point that is how to find the class length and accordingly how to divide the entire data into number of classes. So today we have discussed the uh, one illustration representing discrete frequency distribution and the another uh, illustration explaining the continuous frequency distribution. Now the last two topics for today's video lecture that is two different formulas that is lower boundary point and upper boundary point. 
point. Now, why we require to find the lower boundary point and upper boundary point? Uh, in case of exclusive frequency distribution, always continuous frequency distribution, we have to utilize the exclusive frequency distribution. And if in the question, inclusive frequency distribution is being given to you, suppose in question, it is given to you like this way, the classes, that is 10 to 19, 20 to 29, 30 to 39. Then we have to convert that inclusive classes into exclusive classes for continuous frequency distribution always the classes should be exclusive classes so if in the question inclusive classes are given to you we have to convert it into exclusive classes so to convert it into exclusive classes we have to apply these two formulas okay here you can see that lower boundary point LBP short form I have written that is lower boundary point okay and UBP means upper boundary point lower boundary point is equal to value of lower limit of that class okay value of lower limit of that class suppose I am taking 20 to 29 class okay lower limit of that class what is the lower limit of that class that is 20 okay plus value of upper limit of previous class value of upper limit of previous class what is the previous class that is 10 to 19 so value of upper limit that is 19 of the previous class so 20 plus 19 again repeating value of lower limit of that class suppose this class so lower limit that is 20 and value of upper limit of the previous class so 19 so 20 plus 19 divide by 2 so that would come to 39 divided by 2. Now 39 divided by 2 it would come to 19.5. So lower boundary point that would come to 19.5. Okay. Now next one that is upper boundary point. How to find upper boundary point? Upper boundary point means value of upper limit of that class. Now same class I am taking that is 20 to 29. What is upper limit over here? That is 29. Okay. So value of upper limit of that class that is 29 plus value of lower limit of succeeding class. Lower limit of the succeeding. Succeeding means next class. Lower limit that would come of the succeeding class that is 30. So 29 plus 30 divide by 2. So 59 divided by 2. 59 divided by 2 it would come to 29.5. Right. So what would come the exclusive class that is 19.5 to 29.5. This is the exclusive class. And what was the inclusive class that was given to you? That is 20 to 29. So by these two formulas we have found the lower boundary point and upper boundary point. By this formula the inclusive class would become to exclusive class. Okay. So exclusive class to convert. The, these are the two basic formula but easily also we can convert it into exclusive class by just deducting 0.5 from the lower limit and adding plus 5, 0.5 to the upper limit. So here you can see from 25 deduct my, uh, 0.5 then it would come 19.5 and over here plus 0.5 then it would come to 29.5. This is the alternate method. Each and every time you don't need to apply the formula. Easily you can deduct and do the addition in the lower and upper limit accordingly and you can get the exclusive classes. So this was the last topic for today that I wanted to explain it to you. In the next video lecture, uh, more practical sums related to exclusive class and how to convert the inclusive frequency distribution to exclusive frequency distribution that will be understanding in the next video lecture. Uh, do revise again from the video lecture by referring together with the textbook. That's all for today students. Goodbye. Take care. Stay blessed.